Well here I am outside Radio Gloucestershire again this morning. Uh, it's 9.30 in the morning, it's quite fresh and uh, autumnal today and I'm up here to go on the uh, Kate Clark early morning show. Um, you might remember I used to do a bit of, video, uh, a bit of radio with uh, Vernon Harwood on Country Matters but unfortunately that show's now finished on Radio Gloucestershire. But uh, I've just been asked to come up here again today to talk about uh, the re-release of my book, A Year on the Dairy Farm, and also talk about the YouTube channel, which is quite, um, quite nice. So I'm going to go in there in a minute uh, and do uh, a little radio interview. Um, and what I'll do is I'll edit that bit onto the end of this video. So uh, if you want to hear a bit more about what I do and everything like that, rather than just see me videoing like I normally do, then uh, stay watching or listening. Okay, cheers, let's go. BBC Radio Gloucestershire with Kate Clark. And after 10 o'clock today, I'm really excited to tell you that we're going to have in the studio Richard Cornock. Now, Richard is a farmer and he works the farm in uh, Wooden Under Edge with his brother and his father. He released a book a few years ago called A Year on a Dairy Farm and it's uh, just had a new edition. It's a book which is full of beautiful photographs of uh, farming machinery, tractors, uh, obviously all the dairy cows, but there's a lot of nature in here as well there are swallows there's uh, passages about the barn owls that they have welcomed back to the farm uh, lots of beautiful flowers and we're going to have Richard in the program like I say after 10 o'clock he's also going to be talking about his YouTube channel his video blog called The Funky Farmer it gets over 10,000 hits a day wow right so I'm in the back end of Radio Gloucestershire there's the staff cars let's get in and uh get on the air. Hello? Hi, it's Rich Cornock for Kate. Wait, one second, I can get you. Thank you, mate. Hiya, how are you doing? You're right. Yeah. It's following me this way. Cheers. All right, so here I am in the nerve centre of Radio Gloucestershire. It's funny when you're sitting listening to the radio somewhere, you never know what it's like actually in the building, but this is what it's like. There's the front entrance. I've come back through, in through the tradesman's entrance. And there's Katie. I'm filming her in there. She's waving away. And um, so, th so what we got here, we've got a control room here. And you can just hear her look. And she's introducing me. It's 10 to 10, Sunday morning. And how a guest has arrived. Richard Cornock, who is a dairy farmer in Wootton Under Edge. He's here. Now, he's a video blogger, so he records online. It's his daily life, really. And it gets a huge number of hits per day, over 10,000. And he's brought a camcorder with him and I can see him sitting in our waiting area. Of course he's brought a camcorder with him, he's bound to. Trouble is, I don't have any makeup on today. In fact, I'm not even sure if I've brushed my hair. It was a bit of a rush to get out of the house this morning. He'll be joining us after 10 o'clock today. Well, I should have a little more of a poke around. There's a reception desk from the front. Um, and we've got like a nice foyer, but there's no one manning it because it's Sunday morning. Um, and there's the signs here with a radio, a couple of old radios, a bit of decor. The newspapers are out. So they've obviously flicked through all these. That's, that's Friday's Times there. Of, oh, we've got the Independent, the Sun. Which really isn't what it used to be. Um, so yes, yeah, so it's a big. It's not a very big foyer. Right, so it's about the refurbishment opening so up there. Um, and this is that's the door I'm going to be going through in a minute. So uh, we'll have a little look through there in a bit when she comes out. It's quite nice to have a little poke around, isn't it? To have a look in the foyer. Because not everyone gets to see this. This is something, a world that never, not seen by many people because they're busy listening to the radio rather than actually ever visiting a studio. Um, 
always amazes me as well is that uh, they all work in the dark. There's not a lot of natural daylight in a, in a radio studio. So, um, but it's, I'm just zooming in on that clock there. What does that say? Five, five to 11, actually, they haven't changed the clocks yet because it's actually five to 10. Uh, and I'm gonna be going on there at probably about 10 past. So in the meantime, I'm just gonna wait out here, have my coffee in a BBC Radio Gloucestershire mug and wait to go on. I'm at, hang on. Okay, so we've got a bit of a break, so I'm handing over to Kate. She's gonna film me in the studio. Here we go. So this is what it's like when I come to the radio studio and do my little bit with the mic, because I've, I've been given the green mic and I stand here and do a little bit and, and she goes live and I go, Psh, that's what it's like. Anyway, keep watching the Funky Farmer channel. <laughs> Thank you. I'll just do um, a shot of like everything. Okay. So you can see what's going on. Brilliant. Thank there you. There you go. That's wonderful. Well, and when a woman here on BBC Radio Gloucestershire. Well, I never thought I'd be saying this this morning that not only am I on the radio, but I'm actually being filmed. I'm being camcorded right now. <laughs> BBC Radio Gloucestershire with Kate Clark. We consider dairy as a staple part of our diet. No doubt you have a pint or two in your fridge of, you know, a pint or two of milk in your fridge, a lump of cheese, perhaps yoghurt, but have you ever considered where it comes from and how the cows on the dairy farm are cared for? Richard Cornock is a dairy farmer from Wooden Under Edge who is raising his profile by recording a video blog of his daily life on the farm. He's known as the Funky Farmer online and he joins us in the studio now. Good morning. Morning. morning, Kate. How many um, hits then do you get each day on your video blog? Well, it's a lot actually. It va varies from about ten thousand to fifteen thousand a day, which which I find myself incredible because when I started this, I had no idea whether anyone would watch them. You know? Yeah. So you are surprised. Why do you think it's so popular? Well, I mean, the only thing I can think is that I give an inside view of a farm, which you don't normally see. Because if you watch a programme, say, something like Country Fire, what it is, is a film crew turn up and they film someone doing the job. Well, that can be a little bit staged because you can only do something when the film crew are there. Whereas I'm actually carrying that camcorder with me when I, when I go out around doing my daily job. So... Like the other week, I was moving some cattle to a, another field, and it was just me in the field, no one else, and I had the camcorder and held it, I filmed the cows, and they followed me like Pied Piper. And it was totally natural, there wasn't any stage man, there wasn't someone going, right, can you do that again, please, or, or let's, right, action, go. It was literally, I switched the camcorder on and I called the cows and they followed me. And maybe that's what people like, because it is genuine, straight off the farm, no, no trickery or anything, I'm just being honest to what I do, really. And people just love to delve into that other world, I suppose, because yeah. to you, it's normal. You've been doing it yeah. all your life. You've grown up on it. But to us who have desk jobs, we think of this glamorised version, perhaps, well, it's of really, farming. It is really funny because... You know, every job you anyone does, whoever's listened to this radio show, think that's normal, isn't it? That's normal for their life. Like you in this radio studio, it's your normal life. And I, I'm always a very nosy person. I always do like to see what other people do. So all I've done is open a door into my life. And it is normal to me, but I forget that some people are watching this could be sat in an office block in New York, miles away from England and a dairy farm, and have no idea where their milk comes from. So I'm giving them that insight, if you like. How do you actually physically do it? Because from my understanding, farmers are extremely busy. You know, <laughs> how, how do you have the time? Well, this is why it works up? for me, because I actually do it while I'm doing the jobs. So, um, I mean, it is a little bit of time taken, but... Um, like when I'm mowing a field, I've got a tripod in the, in the field and I set the camcorder up to film the outside shots of me, say, mowing the tractor. And then I also film inside the cab. And then what I do is I cut the two together, but it's actually what I'm doing the job. So it takes a little bit of time, but not too much. And, and it's just sort of, um, and I edit in the evenings because I've got two small children, don't get a chance to go out in the evenings like I used to. So instead of watching something on TV, I just I just do a bit of editing on the laptop in the evenings. Mm, and it, you can be creative as you like then yeah. with the editing, can't you? I did see a couple, and one of them was almost like your outtakes, like you running to, oh, yeah. the, um, running to the tractor, which is normally something that you would take out. That's right. I did yeah. do a video showing, showing what it's I like. Those, Again, I like to show people the inside of things. So I did a little video showing what it's like when, how I set it up. So I, I literally 
set the camcorder up on the tripod, press record, run to the tractor, start my job, like hedge trimming or something, and then I cut out the bit where I'm running. And then the time when it was really windy and the camera blew over. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's always something like that that goes not quite right, you know? <laughs> Keep those moments in there. I think yeah, well, they're funny, funny, aren't they? In their yeah, real life. People like those moments. Um, let's talk about um, um, how you've been encouraging wildlife on the land, mm. because I, I, I've been reading in your book that you've got hay meadows which yeah. aren't so popular anymore you've got barn owls back on the farm mm. you help and encourage the swallows you know how did that come about first of all well i mean it's, i've got to give a big thank you to my father really because he's a family farm i work with my dad he's still out in the mornings he's, he's i just whisper this he's 81 yeah. but um he gets up in the morning still but he always had a love of wildlife so as a kid he'd come inside and he'd, he'd maybe bring in something that he'd found like a wildflower or something and say look at this wonder what this one is and we'd look it up in a book which is quite important when you're a young child to get that grounding um and then i've kind of continued that love myself and then we got we got involved with the cover conservation schemes we're in a thing called higher level stewardship which gave us funding to to do wildlife conservation on the farm so for example we um we've replanted a, a an orchard which i made as a community orchard in the end and got families involved with that um but also we we replanted some wildflower seeds in a hay meadow 27 different varieties of wildflower seeds we put back into this uh, meadow uh, and i got children involved with that as well from a local primary school come and help plant um the seeds mm. and that's the nice thing because it's an ongoing thing it's not overnight we put the seeds in the meadow and it's, we're on year three now and it's only just starting to show a difference we can see different things like yellow rattle you know oxide daisies popping up which weren't there before and it's it's a lovely thing and i really enjoy that side of the farm because to be honest driving a tractor every day does get a bit boring but it but you know if you can be involved with the land as well as the farming then that to me makes my life interesting and the way that you cut your hedges it's biannual so that encourages wildlife into the hedges too well well, well done for spot you have read this book haven't you yeah, I have. um it is very true if you trim your hedges every two years rather than every year you give more cover for the birds but also what is really important is not to trim the hedges at the start of the hedge cutting season which is the end of august but maybe do it in january february if you can because that gives the birds time for them to eat the berries on the hedgerows because yes. if i cut my hedges in september i'm wiping out a whole buffet for the birds yeah of course yeah. so that's that's just little tweaks like that you can do change your management well these things you know 100 years ago and more would have been just absolutely normal on yeah. farms so so what's happened in the well, last 50 years? The big thing, I probably, I mean, the classic one example of that is the hedge trimming you're talking about because 100 years ago, a couple of Japs would go around every year with a, with a couple of billocks and trim the hedges and they probably wouldn't be able to do the whole farm in that year because they, they didn't have the time. But nowadays, someone can get on a tractor and on the 1st of September could drive out and trim all the farm in, in maybe a week or something. Yeah. Uh, and, and so that's what's changed mecha mechanisation and also the need for food, really. You know, I think after World War Two, there was a big push for Dig for Victory. So a lot of these hay meadows and things were ploughed up um, to create more intensive um, fields. But we lost something. We lost a lot of our wild... Um, yeah. you know flowers and things during that time so y you having these hay meadows mm. um obviously yeah it's a lovely thing for future generations and for the community to get involved in but how does that work because you are essentially a, a business yeah. you know do you get some funding to well do I, I, I can say that um the funding does make a big difference because higher level stewardship has given me income towards the cost of of because what i have to do in this hay meadow because it's called semi-improved grass and is i've taken out all the fertilizer to give the flowers more chance to grow mm -hmm. Because if you fertilise on a field, then the grass outcompetes it. But I actually get some funding towards that to offset the loss of the um, income, mm. and I also have to make hay, so I get a payment for that. It's it's a it's a good idea. I mean, people have got different ideas of wh whether farmers should get a subsidy, but I think. You know, if you're putting it towards something positive like that, then I don't think that's too bad a thing, really. Yeah. And it's encouraging all those butterflies. Yeah. And, and those also the effects. fact that I've involved children, which, you know, means the message gets out there what they can do, because they did go ahead and do something in their school afterwards, mm. which, you know, I, you, no one can knock that. It's a lovely thing yeah. to do for everyone. Yeah. Hands-on experience, taking it back into the classroom. Uh, we're just going to break for some music. If you would like to get in touch with the programme, if you'd like to join in the conversation, it's 01452 307575. We'll be back with Richard after music from you at half past 11. BBC Radio Gloucestershire with Kate Clark. 
we're back on the farm very soon. We're with Richard Cornock from Wooden Under Edge hearing about life on a dairy farm. First of all, what's the weather going to be like for us today? It's Emily Wood. It's not looking too bad for today, but so we've got a mix of weather really for the week ahead. It's a bit unsettled. Uh, so, uh, yeah, a bit of everything to come. Uh, today, though, is looking fine and dry and bright. It's been a bit of a chilly start, though. Uh, one or two mist patches locally as well, but a good deal of bright and sunny weather to come through the day. Light winds through the day as well, just a bit of a higher cloud here and there. It should remain dry. Temperatures today uh, up to 12 degrees in Gloucester, 11 Celsius in Sirencester and Stroud. Probably remaining feeling quite fresh after our cold start, but at least we've got plenty of sunshine. Tonight looks dry with some clear skies at first, but some thicker cloud spreading out from the south and west, and it will turn a bit breezier through the night. So not as cold tonight compared to last night. Lows of around 6 degrees. Now tomorrow looks quite cloudy and breezy, and the will be some rain out to the west and I think that could possibly push in later in the day otherwise dry tomorrow highs of 14 degrees and then Tuesday I think we could well have some outbreaks of rain another cloudy and windy day perhaps a bit of a break from the rain on Wednesday but it's looking likely that further showery rain will be uh, arriving on Thursday we are back then with Richard Cornock, who is a dairy farmer in Wooten Under Edge, and he's raising his profile by recording a video blog of his daily life on the farm. It's a video blog you can find on YouTube under the name of The Funky Farmer. He's also got a book out as well, A Year on a Dairy Farm. And Richard, you were telling me that this book, well, it came about by chance. Tell us tell us how it happened. Well, life's, life's full of lucky stories sometimes, isn't it? And this one is a lucky story because I didn't intend to have a book published. All I did was to decided to photograph our farm for a year and I carried a little camera in my pocket like you can nowadays you know you don't need one of these big massive cameras and I photographed our farm for a year and towards the end of the year I thought what am I going to do with these pictures so what I decided to do was put it in a big book for mum and dad for Christmas and it's a one-off and people you know really took to it they saw it at mum and dad's house and uh, someone said to me oh get that published and I was like oh yeah that ain't gonna happen because I don't know anything about publishing but to cut a long story short very luckily, a, a company called Amberley Publishing, who were based near Stroud, um, offered me a book deal on it. And I thought, oh my goodness, because they said to me, could you write your year on the farm, your story? Because in mum and dad's version, I hadn't written what was going on, because I thought mum and dad don't need to be told that's a bailer. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I then wrote, sat down and tried to write an easy, accessible way of into farming, really. You know, not too complicated, something that wasn't you know, really stupid, but at the same time, not highbrow. It's it's basically, you know, this is how we do things. So that's that's how it came out. And so the year on dairy farm is, is a kind of my year on a farm, very personal because it's not about, you know, general farming, it's about our farm. But I've tried to make it accessible for kids and adults, really. What I love about it is those tiny little insights that... Um, we would just have no idea about. For example, I've got to admit, I, I really, my heart just, you know, swelled a little bit when I read that you've got a rep who's been visiting your farm for 40 yeah. years, every fortnight, oh, yeah. Friday Stan. at 10am. Stan Hedges, if you're listening. Oh, he's a wonderful chap. He comes in... Um, He's been doing it like 68, 1968 he started coming to the farm now. Um, and he he sells uh, dairy cake for a, a company near us. Comes in every morning, regular as clockwork, bang on 10. Comes for a coffee with my dad. Um, and he's into his 70s now. I hope you don't mind me saying that. Um, but he still visits us. And, and that is wonderful. It's a small family firm that supply the cake. Um, the cow, We call it cattle cake. It's, it's the little pellets that you feed to cattle. And we buy, buy that by the ton. It's delivered to the farm. But, yeah, he, he's been coming for so long. And it's a lovely thing. You know, that's, mm. that's the thing um, nice about small family firms. It's not just about every last penny, really. Yeah. So Hope he's not, become, anyway. you know, probably a family friend, yeah. no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I like uh, the fact that you've got a 40-year-old Massey Ferguson. Oh, yeah. Does it start every morning? Oh, Oh, whatever the, the weather the best tractor on the farm it's a little um massive fixing 135 if any of you are into your tractors you'll know what that is it's a small smaller uh, little tractor that um came out in the 60s and um which on our scraper now yard scraper which we scrape the cow muck out and it's so reliable it's such a lovely little tractor it, it, and th it, compared with modern toy uh, for tractors it almost looks like a dinky toy yeah but what is good about it is because it's old technology it's very easy to maintain because you can just get a spanner on it a modern tractor now you it's called electronic dashboard and everything and you look at it and you go oh, i don't know what to do with that yeah you have to have it diagnosed let's talk about business because there's mm. been a lot in the press recently about milk prices mm. how is business for you in terms 
terms of milk prices? It is difficult. I, I'm, you know, I can't pretend it isn't really. Um, the milk price is rock bottom, really, uh, and we we just keep going. We, we're just ticking over. There isn't any spare money on the farm, really. We're just we're just sort of making it, do with what we can. We're not spending anything, uh, and I don't know how long this will go on for. But you know, if we can keep going to hopefully improves, and that's what our aim is. And uh, we are a bit better off than some people. We supply um, Dairy Crest, which are based at Stroud, and we've got a little contract that is based, partly based on cost of production, so we can get a little bit price, bit better price than some people. Um, but it is very difficult out there. I did go blockading actually back in the um, yeah. August, and that was a really nice evening, full of people that you had something in common with, uh, and we blockaded out of a certain supermarket, and I won't say who, um, but actually even the people involved with the supermarket were actually positive and on our side. So what did that mean? Did that mean customers couldn't get into the shop? Um, well, it, was, it wasn't a shop, it was actually a distribution centre, so it was lorries not getting in and out, not supplying the supermarket, um, and... and if you think, well, why are farmers doing that? Well, we don't want to do that. It's not, you know, I don't get up in the morning and do the milking and then think, oh, I can't wait to go and blockade somewhere tonight. But it's a basically, we tried so many different things, you know, and if people just keep stoning more than you, you've got to go to extreme measures. But it was a peaceful process. It wasn't like going to France where they're setting fire to tyres on the front. Yeah. It was all very good natured and we left, you know, on a good good atmosphere, really. Tell us a little bit about um, life on the farm. What time do you have to get up to milk the cows? Well, I had the day off today, which is quite nice. But um, normally I'm, I'm on the farm probably about 10 to 6 or something. Uh, we're not a very big herd. We're only milking about 75 cows. If you've got a, a bigger herd than that, you'll probably get there earlier. Um, and at this time of, de- of year, it's just starting to get a bit muddy and mucky in the field so we're thinking about bringing the cows inside in about two weeks time really if it stays mild we'll keep them out as long as we can but the, the main problem is that grass stops growing yeah. like you don't bother mowing your lawn now really much do you yeah. well for us there's no grass in the field so eventually we've got to bring them inside to feed them is it right that what they're fed on affects the taste of their milk well i don't know about that um I think if you if you had something like wild garlic or something like that, it would taint it mm. um, because obviously that's quite a strong flavour, isn't it? But generally speaking, in a, in a on a farm, they're pretty well having a, a kind of you know grass based, maybe some maize silage. That doesn't really affect it. Um, no. The one thing is interesting there. Have you ever tried um, raw milk, Kate? No. Well, the taste on that is so different from what you'll buy in the supermarket. I think what would put me off is mm. the fact that it's warm. Well, it, well, it's only warm straight from the cow because mm. we chill it down to, uh, but we've got to chill it to below five degrees temperature. Okay, so how does it taste different? Well, if it's it... hard to describe because unless you've tried it, you won't really appreciate it. But this, the taste is so different because the milk you buy in the supermarket has been pasteurised, so it's been heat treated. And so it's taken the bugs out of it, but it, it affects the taste completely. And, and also, you're probably buying something like semi skimmed or something like yeah. that, which has skimmed all the fat off. Mm. And it's also been homogenised, so the fat's mixed in. You don't ever get, do you remember the old days you'd get cream on top of the bottle? Yeah, and the we birds just about old would enough to remember that. It. No, I do remember. <laughs> but young kids won't really appreciate that, will they? That was really sweet, um, wasn't it, when the bird, the blue tits yeah. would come and get the top of the cream. And, and that affects the taste as well, I think. I mean, I still, at the farm, we dip the jug in the bulk tank and have all our milk out of the tank, and it's yeah. so different. Yeah. I really like it, but not yeah. everyone does. Yeah. Um, tell me about, we've been talking this morning about the fact that some farms in the Cotswolds have um, unfortunately had vandalism mm. and 23 sheep were killed in just one night. What do you do on the, fa- and basically the chap from the NFU was saying that, you know, be vigilant, yeah. be suspicious, report things. It must be so difficult though when you've got. It is difficult I, because, know, what do you do? I mean, the farm is not something like a, a maybe a warehouse where it's completely locked down every night and shut up. You know, a lot of buildings are left open because that's the practicality of farming. So um, you have to be careful. We, we, we actually lock our gates around the farm now. Uh, a lot of farms have CCTV and flood lighting, as the NFU chat was saying. Um, interesting, the police did visit us only recently with a farm watch initiative they're doing in our area where they are being vigilant. My brother also gets text messages from the police on his phone now, which actually tell you about rural crime in the area um mm. one example we've had of, of a problem is that um someone opened one of our field gates and, it, and there was no reason for them to do that other than they were just being sheer you know difficult and actually our cows got out on the road now not only is that an inconvenience for us but it could have been a serious problem if a traffic i mean a car yeah. been driving fast around the road it would have come against a herd of cows could, could have caused a really serious problem and how long before you found out you know? well we were really lucky then because uh, someone we know was just driving by and, and just saw these it was kids on bikes actually um, 
legging it away and he he knew what he knew about the countryside and he thought <laughs> and he managed to open a gate on another field the opposite side of the road and these cows all piled into there managed to shut the other gate before the rest got out and then came and notified us but it's a very worrying time for us because cattle on the road is always the worst thing that any farmer can get a call on mm. really I, i'm surprised that they bother to leave i mean why do they want to go well they're the curious animals i think it, uh, cattle are very curious about when there's people in a field because they're not used to seeing people so if something like that goes on yeah. they're like mm, what's that going on there can you give us your call that oh you do, do you want me to yeah just back off the mic a oh, little back bit off is a bit us, loud then. give us your call i've got my lads doing this now <laughs> right okay let me explain most farmers have got their own unique call for getting in animals or something and the cows get to in our farm the cows get to know it and what it means to them is it's time to come in for milking so when i go into a field just before they get the cows in i do this and i'll back off a little bit it might be a bit <laughs> you ready then yeah Ready. Come on in, come on in, hop, 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 hop. Come on in, come on in, hop, 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 hop. <laughs> there you go. And um, that's my my version of it. But some farmers have got different ones. And they know that that's feeding time that and means. milking time. And also, I love the fact that they come in um, and line up in a certain yeah. order. There's a hierarchy. There is a hierarchy. And and do you know what? There's something I didn't actually really appreciate until I was filming it myself. And I filmed the cows from a distance. And I suddenly noticed that when some of the cows were coming into the collecting yard, they were taking a position by the doorway ready, even though they had the whole yard to stand in. Some of them were actually stood waiting. And I'm obviously aware that some cows come in near the end because some don't want to come in very quickly. Yeah. But I didn't realise that some actually, when they first come in, really make sure they get that spot. Yeah, yeah. And so also in the milking parlour, because we've gone on a breast parlour, which is quite an old-fashioned type of parlour, some of them will only go in certain spaces in the in the breast parlour. Hey, come on, when we're at work, don't, don't you use well, the same cubicle over oh the yeah, toilet and, if, and, and like if, that? And um, if kids are at school, they want the same desk, don't <laughs> the they? It's same exactly desk, the same with cows. Same place. It's well, really funny. Do you know every single cow? You get to know them. I'll tell you what, you do get to know the troublemakers, and we've got two on our farm which are really well known. Number 93 because she has learnt how to let the cake down in the milking parlour to feed herself. Nice. The problem with that is she doesn't know how to turn it off. <laughs> so she pulls the, pulls the shoes out, and then the, if you're not careful, you hear this noise. <laughs> if you don't hear it, about half a tonne of cattle cake is on the floor. Oh, I love it. So you do, you know. And 446 four, 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 knows how to open the gate to let herself go. And I bet there are some cows that are just perfect for you that do exactly what they're oh, told. Oh, some mellow ones. Some are very mellow. Yeah. The older they get, them, a bit like us, really, people. Yeah. The older we get, the more mellow we Can't get, I think. Bothered. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's lovely to chat to you, Richard. Thank you so much for coming in today. I know Pleasure. you've got your day off. What are you taking your parents out Going for lunch? Going out for lunch today. This is a Christmas present from last Christmas. We finally got round to doing it. <laughs> so your book, A Year on a Dairy Farm, is available from where? Um, well, you can get it at all sorts of places. Ambly Publishing um, on Amazon. And if you want to go onto my website, which is www.richardcornock.co.uk, you can actually get a signed copy from me. There you go. If you want to see this interview being filmed, have a look on The Funky Farmer. The Funky Farmer. I'll get it on there by next weekend for sure. On uh, YouTube. Thank you. Once again, thank you.